I'm Chen Yang, and uh, I work for Intel. For uh, my presentation is about uh, uh, Load.js and uh, its engine. On, uh, on uh, Intel architecture, and uh, I will cover two uh, sub uh, topics. The first one is uh, um, JavaScript and uh, GTX86 uh, machine code mapping. Providing support, and the second topic is about the x87 quark processor enabling of load JS. Okay, I will page. And this is the general. First, I will uh, introduce the background of the JavaScript and the GTD code machine uh, code mapping profiling on uh, Intel architecture. And uh, I will introduce the background, and then I will introduce how to enable this feature step by step. And for the second uh, topic, I will also uh, introduce the background, and then I will uh, tell you how to build Node.js for Quark processors. Uh, first, uh, it's a scan of the current load uh, profiling support for JavaScript code. At first, uh, you know, there are many uh, C++ level profiling tools. Uh, there are uh, platform dependent profiling tools for, but it's uh, Maybe it's not for JavaScript code, so our focus is the JavaScript code. So uh, we are uh, uh, go, to, go to the next items. Uh, and you know there are many um, profiling tools for JavaScript code, and uh, some of them I introduced uh, these two days. But uh, you may find that almost uh, most of them depends on the V8 built-in CPU profiler tools, right? It's a, uh, uh, I listed it here. It's a first, uh, it, the, the user needed to pass the proof flag to V8 engine. And the V8 engine will generate, uh, generate out a log file. It's, uh, and then uh, do some post processing, and it will show the final uh, profiling results as the uh, black picture, right? Uh, you may find that uh, it's only the function level profiling result. This means you can get, uh, uh, this profiling tool is a sample based pro profiling tool. So you can get the number uh, of the samples one function occupied and also the percentage. So if you list it here, you, you may find the hot functions, but that's all. If you want to optimize the first function, um, maybe it's difficult because the function may be big and complicated. There are many basic blocks and there are many, uh, for example, if else branches. So it's difficult for the user to find the root cause, to locate it. And uh, also I know that the V8 uh, provided another profiling support that uh, if you uh, pass the LL uh, proof flag to it and uh, then combine it with the proof tools, for example, on Linux platform, uh, it can generate more detailed information. You can get the uh, function level profiling uh, result. You mean you can know which function is the hottest tool. Uh, hottest functions, and also you can get the uh, profiling uh, distribution for almost every assembly code. But uh, it's also difficult for the user to find the uh, detailed JavaScript source code. You mean you, the user needed to map the assembly code back to JavaScript code, right? Maybe it's difficult because there are many optimization in the digital compiler in the engine. So we found that there is a big missing. This is the, uh, the mapping between the JavaScript code and the JIT code in, in load. So this, this, this is what we, we are provided in V2. At the first, I will uh, uh, introduce the V2 profiler and the JIT code mapping uh, briefly. First, uh, Intel V2 profiler is, uh, is a commercial profiling uh, tool developed by Intel, so maybe it's not a uh, good message because it's commercial, you need to pay for it. But uh, I have a good message which is not needed here that uh, you may download the, the evaluation version and uh, have a try before you buy, it, buy the license. And also it has the uh, uh, command line and also the graphics uh, interface uh, for, for, for users. So it's very convenient for users to use it. And it uh, supports uh, Windows, Linux, and uh, also Android, but uh, maybe uh, load for Android can not run on Intel platform, I don't know. I, I cannot make sure. So our focus is the Linux and the Windows platform. 
And the most important uh, thing here is that it provides a functionality so that the, uh, this provider can profile the runtime GTD code. This means that it can consume the, the, the simple information generated by the GTD compiler dynamically and then uh, show it uh, when it, uh, the post processing. And also it's only for Intel processors. So you can, uh, you can uh, find this software on Intel website. So uh, we'll also introduce uh, the Vitrons GTD code uh, mapping. And I think it's very easy to use because it's provided the API to use. And we have implemented uh, this in the V8 engine. So for the uh, embed of the end engine, it's, uh, it's a lot difficult to enable it. And uh, it's also provided a very detailed uh, mapping between the GTD machine code and the JavaScript source code. Uh, then I will uh, introduce how to enable this profiling support step by step. At first, uh, uh, we will uh, update the upstream status, sorry. At first, this feature has been landed in Node.js uh, by the pro request number is 3785. And uh, thanks a lot for Ben and some others to review and analyze the timing. And uh, when I uh, write this PPT, the, the uh, release of Node.js 5.2 is in, uh, in progress. And currently, maybe it, it has been released, so it should uh, contain this feature. And also, I have, uh, one thing I would mention is that it's only a compilation flag. It's not a runtime flag, so the user needs to download the source code and compile it by yourself. The reason is that uh, Vitrium Profiler is a commercial software, so it, uh, the, the real lot uh, landed it as a runtime flag. And the first step is that certainly you need to download the, uh, the loaded source code. And uh, we need to do some special configuration for the uh, compilation. Uh, for Windows platform, you need uh, generally you, uh, you to use the vcbuild.bat to do compile, right? So you need to add an uh, additional flag. It's enable return to it. And then it will generate a special version of load for uh, supporting this uh, profiling. And on Linux platform, you also need to uh, add an additional flag is uh, enable v tune profiling to, to the configure uh, script and then you do make. Uh, and the second major step is that you need to uh, install your v tune. You, you can, first you need to get and uh, install v tune uh, on your machine and then uh, you, you can uh, do profiling according to the user guide document. There is no special configuration for it. At first, you can uh, open interview tool and then create a project for it. And then you can, uh, you need to configure the VTune. I, one thing I also mentioned here is that uh, you, you cannot start a load first and then start VTune to attach the process to do profiling. It does not work. You need to start VTune first and use VTune to start a load. Yeah, so you need to configure the, the, target, uh, the target type as the launch, launch application right here. And then you, you can configure the uh, application location here and then pass the, the parameter to it. Generally, it should be the JavaScript code that you, you need to run. And you can also configure the when uh, where you start the profiling and uh, how long will you do profiling. You can configure the duration time and some other configurations I, don't, I did not need it here. And then you can continue to configure the, 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 the sampling type. You can select the supported event type. Generally, uh, maybe you can uh, select the basic uh, hotspot, for example. And then you can also configure the intervals. And then you can start. You can start the profiling. It will start loaded and run your, your applications and then do profiling on the background. And when it's finished, it will show the result. It will show it like this. Uh, at first, it will list all the uh, uh, hottest function here, bottom up uh, order. So you may find that the red, uh, red rectangle is the CPU time. CPU time. So the longer it means this function occupies more CPU time. And there is a module name, 
generally speaking, the, the, there is a uh, dynamic code. This means this code is generated for JavaScript. So if we do not enable this feature and you provide the load, there is a, all the uh, JIT JavaScript code is mixed together. There is a long, the only one long uh, rectangle for, for rectangle for, for the JavaScript code. You cannot uh, break down it. So, and uh, for example, if you want to uh, check the first the, the hottest function, you can click it, and then they will show the detailed source code and the JIT code mapping here. So it's very easy for the user to find the real root root cause of the performance, right? For example, uh, the, the, the two loops occupy the most CPU time, so maybe the user can uh, optimize it. And uh, sometimes the user want to know uh, why it's, 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 it's hot. So you can, you can click the assembly button here, and then it will show this, uh, the, the corresponding assembly code of this, this line is also displayed. If you, you know, change different uh, JavaScript source code, the corresponding assembly code will be highlighted. And you can understand the, the, the real reason for it. So I think it's very useful and uh, direct for, for, for the user to locate their root cause of the performance. Any question for this? Hi. Pardon? The order? Overhead. Overhead. Uh, I, I did not make it, but generally speaking, it's not very uh, hard because uh, they are run in different uh, uh, process. Right? And the, uh, the simple information is generated by the eight engine, and uh, generally speaking, only one time when we compare it, and it's passed to uh, retune processors, and that's all. So generally, it has a low, very big uh, impact for the performance. Yeah. Is it done by doing sampling, or is it done by doing prologue and prologue? It's not by sampling. It's uh, the uh, it's uh, the uh, you went to driving profiling. So you're injecting prologue and prologue hooks on all the functions. I mean, the prologue. I'm injecting hooks at the beginning and end of every function and taking exit, or are you sampling? Uh, it's sampling. It's a lot, uh, yes, it do, does not touch the JavaScript code. Yes, it's uh, all the uh, profiling information is collected by the return. Yes. Okay. I will continue uh, next topic. Uh, this is going to be used about the x87 quark processor enabling for Load.js. At first, I will introduce the background and uh, tell you how to build a load for a quark processor. At the first, uh, uh, I will introduce the uh, InterX87. InterX87 is, uh, is only the float point ISA for x86 uh, architecture before SSE uh, instruction is introduced, right? Now, and currently, it also coexists with SSE instructions for the major Inter processors. And uh, I will introduce the Intel Quark pro uh, family processors. Uh, Quark processor is designed for ubiquitous uh, computer markets to the IoT, and uh, from the multi to to industry and also to wearables. And uh, because uh, Quark processor, uh, for Quark processor size is the most important uh, priority, so it has no uh, SSE instruction support. It has only x87 instruction for fluid point uh, computation. Uh, and I will uh, introduce the Google of its original root app. Oh, about two two years ago, as it means that just um, before the three point twenty six release of eight engine. Uh, before before this uh, release, uh, the four four i thirty two and x sixty four platform with SSC instruction support, they support it well, and uh, there is uh, optimized the component for it. But for long uh, SSD instruction, for example, the Quark processor, it's supported, but with low priority. There, there is no the optimized compiler for it. And after uh, this release, uh, certainly it will continue to support the uh, i32 and the x64 with SSD instructions. But for uh, long SSD processor, for example, Quark, 
it will be, uh, it, it, the, the, the code is focused. So uh, Intel and Google uh, wait a team collaborated for this uh, platform, and uh, Intel continue to uh, maintain this this port. I mean, from uh, 3.26, there is a new port for uh, 87, x87, and Intel continue to maintain it. It's, a, uh, it's a maintained by our team, uh, we located in Shanghai, China. And this is our effort for, uh, for uh, load and also the V8 engine on Quaker processor. From fun uh, functionality point of view, uh, we, we, we continue to maintain and the, the upstream, uh, upstream code repository. Uh, almost every day we are uh, maintain it. And from uh, 3.26 to the current, the latest release uh, is 4.8. And, uh, is also maintained by our team, by, by, by Intel. And also, uh, we, we make sure of that every release of load can work smoothly on Quark processor. We, for every release of load, we download it and uh, do test it on Quark processor because, because uh, x87 is not an official support platform for load, right? So we, we do, do it by ourselves. For every release, we do test for it. And from the performance review, uh, uh, in fact, there are two, uh, our major effort is to uh, implement the optimized compiler for it. Uh, as you know, there are two uh, optimized compilers in the 8 engine. Right? The first is a crankshaft compiler. We implemented it for x87 since 3.26. Uh, the, the, the optimized compiler for different platforms have, uh, has the same front end, but they have the Give the backend, right? So we implemented the backend for x87. And when uh, the turbofan compiler is uh, introduced in uh, about uh, 4.5 release, we also implemented it for x87 port and continue to maintain it. Uh, okay, the last piece is what, uh, how to uh, enable it for Quark processor. If you want to uh, run load on Quark processor, you need to do it, uh, do it uh, manually because it's a lot, I, I have just said it's a lot of feature supported platform. So first you need to download the job, uh, load the source code. And then uh, because X87 is also an I, I32 architecture, right? So you need to set the test CPU as I32. And then it will generate a config.gypi file, right? You need to change it manually. So you need to uh, add the V8 target arc as x87 to the target arc uh, section. You need to add it by manually. So, and then you can make it according to the general process. And then the, the load can be run on Quark processor. Yeah. Okay, that's all. Any question? Okay, thank you.